So I started to think about um, the use of explanations with worked examples. When studying for my masters, um, I did a lot of reading around some of the cognitive load effects. And I um, was surprised to come across this self-explanation effect because it wasn't something I'd really heard of before, when actually it is um, one of the top three study strategies in the um, Dardanowski paper, um, which is often referred to when thinking about cognitive load and study strategies. But it's not one that I'd really taken on board or come across before. Um, and so when I explored this further, the evidence for using self-explanation was very strong, um, particularly in mathematics. Um, and so I thought, well, that will likely translate across to quantitative chemistry problems, which is what I was working on. Um, and so the idea is that if students are able to explain why they're doing the different steps within a calculation, um, then they're more likely to be able to apply that to other um, problems, where maybe similar problems, maybe problems which have got a similar deep structure but a different surface structure. Um, and so it just seemed like a very um, a potentially useful strategy um, which was worth exploring a bit further. Um, so the, the biggest thing that I wanted to change was getting students to engage with understanding worked examples for themselves. So I had the uh, modelling of the worked example that I, I was used to doing with the visualiser. I had lots of examples of practice questions for students to do, but it was kind of the gap between those two. How do I move from students being able to follow an example that I'm doing and sitting there and being able to answer questions about that and feel happy with it, and then being able to answer questions independently um, themselves? And that was something um, which this uh, self-explanation effect um, seemed to be ideal um, for bridging that gap. And so what I, the biggest change I made was encouraging students to actually engage with studying a worked example. So rather than just giving them a worksheet with a worked example at the top um, and then you know, expecting them to get on with the questions and, and use that worked example, I gave them time to actually um, focus on studying that worked example um, and to engage with it and to make sure they'd understood it and then asking them questions about that. Um, so a lot of the research around worked example effects um, suggests giving students prompts that are asking them to write explanations, but I was concerned that that was going to take a lot of time. Um, and so what I did was to um, put an example on the board, a fully worked example up on the whiteboard, um, and to ask the students to explain uh, to their partner the steps that were being taken. So to explain why, why was this step being taken? Why was this particular calculation being done? What was that you know, being used to work out? Why was that important? How was that helping the students to get to the end goal of the problem? Um, and then I asked some of them, um, so cold called on some of the students to uh, give me those answers. Um, for themselves so that I could assess kind of how, how the class had understood that and how well they were able to explain it. So I think the main challenge was really getting students to engage with those worked examples and that was really the whole point in, in this um, intervention that I was putting in place was um, getting students to engage with the worked examples. You know, they were there on the worksheets, but they weren't helping them. So how was I going to get them to engage with it? How was I going to make sure that happened? Um, and as I said, the way I really did that was through putting those up on the board. Um, and initially I put one up on the board, but I'd already given them the worksheet with the, the question on. And what I found was they weren't really engaging with that discussion. They were just trying to get on with the questions. So a better way that I discovered um, was to just put the question up on the board and not actually give them a worksheet with any other questions on until we'd spent a good bit of time really focusing on that worked example on the board, making sure students could understand that in their pairs and then um, having a discussion around that um, before then providing practice for students. And the second change was to um, adapt my worksheets from being just lots of questions um, kind of um, just straightforward you know, um, questions with a, with a goal and, and a question and this is what you need to work out. Um, and rather than having lots of questions like that on a worksheet, I changed them so that I had faded examples on the worksheet. So where the questions gradually um, had more and more that the students needed to complete for themselves, which is another um, aspect of 
um, producing effective worked examples, which is well, well established um, in research. Um, and so those, the combination of those two things really overcame um, the problem of getting students to engage with the worked example, because initially when it's on the board, they couldn't do anything else because that was the only thing they had to look at. Um, and it's easy for me to kind of monitor whether they were doing that or not. And then secondly, having the faded examples meant that students were more likely to actually kind of draw on one example to help them with the next because they could see that in each example I was only asking them to do a step more than before rather than the whole thing for themselves. So the impacts which I feel this has had mostly are encouraging greater independence in students in their problem solving. Um, so they were much, much better at answering questions themselves, um, at being able to identify where they had gone wrong, particularly the faded examples helped with that and the fact they'd gone through the process of explaining different steps. So they were able to identify kind of the errors and the sticking points by referring to the worked examples and the faded examples. So when they were asking me for help, rather than just being like, Miss, I'm stuck, um, they were able to say to me, I'm stuck and this is why. Like, I don't understand this particular thing. I don't know what I've got to do at this point in my question. Um, and that was really helpful for me. So I felt I was having much more productive conversations with students and that they were much more independent in their ability to answer questions and to tackle problems independently.